Dodge dealer presents Showtime USA. Good evening, Miss Friedley. Good evening, Mike. Your new 1951 Dodge sure is a beauty. Yes, Mike, it's a great car. National Theater and Academy. Tonight, Vinton Friedley, Ava Gabor, Johnny Johnston, Georgina Cookson and Michael Evans, Lawrence Desmond, and John Garfield and Mildred Gunnick in the scene from Pear Gint. This is Showtime USA. Showtime USA. Now, one of the most important things in the theater and television is the lighting. So I thought this week you might like to see some of the lamps that we use in this theater. Now, here we have what we call the number one boom. Over here is a uh, lamp which is used for general, general lighting. It has a little thing here to protect it, and we have about 35 of those uh, lamps here in the theater. This, as you probably know, is uh, a thousand watt spot. And over here we have a lamp that's called a Fresnel. Now, uh, these little blinders here are known as stable doors. So you see, you can uh, make it a floodlight or you can make it a spotlight. Now, all this equipment is part of the magic that we use in bringing uh, and brightening up our productions. But we have a lady with us tonight who needs no such magic. She's our mistress of ceremonies, and I give you Miss Ava Gabor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Do you remember me? I am the one who's always afraid that I get into some trouble up here. And if I get into some trouble today, will you help me? <laughs> Thank you. But, Mr. Philly, for well, what are these things doing here? Why, those are lights, Ava. Uh, anything the matter? No, just that I, I fix myself up and I put on my prettiest dress and, and what do I see? Hardware. <laughs> yes, but they're very necessary, you know. I know, I listen to you through the curtains, yes. but aren't those lights supposed to be up there? Well, yes, usually, yes. Well, how do they get down here? Well, you just call to the stage manager and you say, uh, let it in. And, and how do you get them up? Well, you just say, uh, take it away. And how do you put the lights on? You say, kick it. Kick it. Uh, Mr. Stage Manager, will you please take it away? <laughs> Go now, on. Ava, about uh, this light over here. Don't you want one of the stage hands to strike it? No, no, this one I'm going to use for my first introduction. Well, I hope you get away with it and good luck to you. <laughs> And all the best. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I will. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn this light on a very handsome gentleman. I first met him when we were both working on the same lot in Hollywood. He's a marvelous singer and a very big star now. His name is... Hit it! <laughs> His name is... Uh, slap it! Well, slap it or hit it or do anything you wish, just put it on. <laughs> Johnny Johnston. If you're troubled by the blues, wake up before you reach the end. Don't be so unhappy, my friend. Be like me. I'm gonna live till I die. I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna take the town and turn it upside down. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. They're gonna say, what a guy. I'm gonna play for the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing. I'm gonna have my fling. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. The blues will lay low. I'll make them stay low. They'll never trail over my head. I'll be a devil till I'm an angel. But until then, hallelujah, gonna dance, I'm gonna fly. I'll take a chance, flying high. Before my number's up, I'm gonna fill my cup. I'm gonna live, 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 until I die. 
I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna play for the sky. You gotta sing and have your play. So I'm gonna dance. You gotta dance. I'm gonna play. You gotta play. I'm gonna sing, sing smile, smile, dance, and live. I'm gonna play for the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing. I'm gonna have my fling. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. They're gonna say, what a guy. I'm gonna play for the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing. I'm gonna have my fling. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. The blues will lay so low. I'll make them stay so low. They'll never trail over my head. I'll be a devil till I'm an angel. But until then, hallelujah, gonna dance, 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 gonna fly. I'll take my chance riding high. Before my number's up, I'm gonna fill my cup. I'm gonna live, 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 live until I die. Live, live, live until I die. Before my number's up, I'm gonna fill my cup. I'm gonna live, 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 live until I die. really new car for 51, the great new Dodge. Look at the new modern massive front that will set the style for years to come. And the new wider windshield gives greater visibility and safety. Here are long, low road-hugging lines, real automobile beauty. But for all its smart lines, Dodge still gives you all the headroom you want in a car. Because Dodge is the car actually built around people. This rear window is one of the biggest ever put into an automobile. With the big eye-level side windows and big windshield, you get watchtower visibility in every direction from either seat. There's no car like the dependable, long-lasting Dodge for the long pull ahead. So for value, for dependability for 51, see the new Dodge now on display at your Dodge dealers. Let him show you how you can pay $1,000 more and still not get a car so entirely new in style and engineering advancements as the new 1951 Dodge. <laughs> everything with the stage manager, I'm going to turn this light on something absolutely wonderful. If you have watched this program as regularly as I do, and I hope you did, you will remember that a few weeks ago we did a scene from a play called Ring Around the Moon. In this play there was a multi-billionaire called Messerschmann. This week we are going to tell you some more about this Messerschmann through a dance, a tango. Master Schmann, <laughs> this is such a name I can hardly say. <laughs> Anyhow, he has a sweetheart, a very strange lady, who is secretly in love with his secretary. This secretary likes the lady, but he likes his job with Master Schmann better. <laughs> so for the first time on television, just as they did on Broadway, Georgina Cookson and Michael Evans. They put me in a room looking out on the park, facing directly north. It's most unkind. And they moved all my things in the middle of the afternoon without telling me. They said they couldn't find me. They're not going to make me believe that. I never left the billiard room. They couldn't find me because they didn't want to find me. has got your room. Romanville's niece. The girl with the lovely china blue eyes. But that's just an excuse. The real reason is that he saw us together yesterday and wants me further away from your room. Nonsense. <laughs> He'd have to explain the whole thing to my aunt. She mustn't be idiotic. Oh, she has lovely china blue eyes. Oh, dear heart. This niece of Romainville. Have I said so? Now, be careful, Patrice. I don't like competitors. If Messerschmann and Herr seen us together and feels like braining you, I shall quite understand. Frankly, Patrice, I should be very disappointed if he didn't. Don't you agree? Oh, well, I suppose. I don't know. Oh. I suppose so. Deceive 
Mrs. Schmidt. I'd like to think well of him. The man I love must be noble and courageous. And the man I deceive must be noble and courageous, too. It gives life a kind of dignity, which is most pleasing. Surely you, Patrice, so proud and susceptible, would be terribly upset if you didn't give a savage cry of uncontrollable jealousy. I? Well, Dorothy, I... Absurdly. None of your caliber wouldn't want a woman who wasn't fiercely loved already. Creatures such as ourselves have no patience with a lukewarm. We blaze. Other people may be born to live, but we are on earth to blaze. Yes, Dorothy. <laughs> Very nice of us to bother with him at all. Suppose he does ruin us. What fun it would be to be poor, so long as I was excessively poor. Anything in excess is most exhilarating. Our squalor would seem like a great dark poem. Very dark. Hmm, how amusing to be. I should wash the dishes and clean the flues, whatever they may be. And bake and brew. Oh, how beautifully I should brew. I must get rest of the surf, maybe some affecting little apron. There's no one else, you know, who so well understands my style. What miracle she'll do with a scrap of muslin and a rouge. And then I shall set to work with my tiny dustpan, my tiny broom, and you will work in a factory. I know so many people on the steel board, they'll find you a job as a metal worker easily. And you'll come home in the evenings, nearly dead with fatigue and smelling dreadfully. It'll be quite delicious. And I shall wash you down, my dear, from head to foot with a tiny sponge. It's beautiful to be poor, Patrice. Beautiful. Oh, let him come. What's he waiting for? His money's burning my fingers. I shall give it all back immediately. Everything. <laughs> Except the pearl. comedy star, brought them all here to one person, and that person would be our next guest, Florence Desmond. Thank you, thank you so much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't have to announce this number because the gloves speak for themselves, or they should. You see, Hildegard gave me these gloves, and I think it was very sweet of her. Taking all things into consideration, I think it was very generous of her, really. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as I can get her ready, I'd like to present for you the incomparable Kildegard. I'll be as quick as I possibly can about this, but the ladies in the audience will sympathize with me because they know how long it takes to get these upswept do's. When I don't use a mirror, that means I have to do the whole thing by the Braille system. <laughs> so once again, boys, the incomparable Hildegard. Oh, thank you, thank you. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> oh, I do hope that you're all going to be very happy tonight because I'm now going to play for you on La or La Piano. I never know whether it's masculine or feminine. <laughs> Walking music, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now, all you dear, dear good people, I'm going to play for you one of the lesser-known works of Rach Maninos. <laughs> it is entitled The Prelude in C-Sharp Minor. I'm sure this will be a big surprise to you. I'm sure it will be a big surprise to me. <laughs> You know, 
it gets a bit tricky after that. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, Kel Surprise. Kel, Kel Surprise. Oh, I do love to get flowers from the sponsors. The Dear Dodge Motor Company. Oh, isn't that adorable of them? Oh, that's just a... <laughs> what the hell are these? <laughs> so that's what they think of. Them. The poor Dodge Company. <laughs> Down to their last million. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give them away. What is this number? No, love your rose. What is the name of the woman who sings that? Oh, no, no, love your rose. No, I never can remember names. I can remember the figure, but I can't. <laughs> and so I'm going to give them away. You can have one, sir. How do you do, sir? I do. Oh, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me love for you. And all the time I knew it. I guess you always knew it. Stop the music! Stop the music! <laughs> What's Hildegard doing on her knees? Hildegard's never been on her knees. Hey, how did the Randy get in the sack? <laughs> Let's get back to Hildegard. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Tell me, sir, are you married? I thought you had that masterful look. Do you have any children, sir? You, how many, sir? One? Oh, how clever of you, monsieur. <laughs> you me, will you? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, and madame there. Dear madame, what a charming hat you're wearing, madame. Madame, you, you don't mind me calling you madame, do you? Oh, I mean it in the nicest sense of the word. Really, I do. Will you take that? And now these are for those good people sitting back there in the isolation wards. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we come to the grand finale, that ever popular tune, always new and never old, the Limehouse Blues. Thank you. Walking music, please. <laughs> Oh, Harry, would you, would you please be a dear and in this number play the part of Salvatore? You know that Salvatore is really my other pair of hands. The pair that plays. Do you remember when we went to buy an automobile a few years ago? There was little choice in so far as color was concerned. Yes, those were the days when the manufacturer would give the customer, well, any color he liked, just so long as he liked black. Well, there's been quite a change since those days, and here's Mr. Tom Gilbert representing the engineering division, the men who design and build those great 1951 Dodge cars. Tom? Tell us what Dodge has done about the color on these uh, beautiful new 1951 models. Well, Vinton, this year buyers will have their choice of 23 different colors and color combinations in the new 1951 Dodge. Colors ranging from the dark shades of maroon and blue, green and brown for those who are conservative, right up through the pastel shades of blue, gray, greens, and even French ivory and cream. And for those of you who like to get out and kick up your heels a little bit, we have a bright gay color called jungle line, so that no matter what color suits your personality, we know that you'll be able to find just exactly what you want in a Dodge. And you know, all Dodge exterior colors have been carefully selected by experts to harmonize with the decorator-styled interiors. And what's more, you have a choice of 11 upholstery fabrics, fabrics so well liked by one of America's leading fashion experts that he chose several of them to design the season's outstanding fashion success, the Dodge Motor Coat. And here it is, the coat that's being featured by many leading women's shops from coast to coast. Uh, women uh, fashion experts assure me it's a uh, dashing flare in the new pyramid design. Well, it looks pretty good to me, too. 
You know, I wish we had color on television so that you could really appreciate the array of tasteful color combinations available when you buy a 1951 Dodge. But you can get the whole story yourself at your Dodge dealers. Let him show you how you could pay up to $1,000 more for a car and still not get all the new beauty, the ease of driving, and rugged dependability of this great new 1951 Dodge. A week ago, the American National Theater and Academy brought John Garfield back to the stage. For many years, he wanted to do a beautiful play called Pear Gift. Anta made it possible. Today, in the Anta Playhouse on 52nd Street, is one of the most exciting productions, is one of the most exciting actors New York has seen in many years. Tonight, for his television debut, Showtime USA is proud to present John Garfield with Mildred Dunnock in a scene from the latest Broadway success, Pear Gint. <laughs> now, I would love to uh, set this scene for you, but I think a much better person to do the job is the honorary president of ANTA himself, Mr. Friedman. Peer Gint was written by that master dramatist, Henrik Gibson. It's the story of a lovable, if rebellious dreamer who hopes to find in fantasy what he seeks in life. Now, throughout the play, Peer Gint goes up and back between reality and the world of make-believe. The scene we have chosen for you, however, is one of reality. Now, Pear, forgetting his hiding place in the mountains, returns to his home to find his mother near death. Mr. Garfield as Pear, Miss Dunnock as his mother. I want to tell him. My time is growing short. Pear. 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 <laughs> the Lord bless you with his grace. So you've come, my dear, dear boy. How did you dare come down in the valley? You know your life's at stake here. Oh, <laughs> never mind about my life. I, I, I had to look in a bit to see you. Now I can die in peace. Die? Well, well, what's all this foolishness? The end is come. My hour is nigh. Oh, you... Your feet and hands are out cold. Aye. It'll soon be over. When you see my eyes fill up with death, you must close them carefully. Take great care to see to my coffin. Let it be a nice one. Oh, there's plenty of time to think of that. Yes. Oh, now, 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 now we'll talk together. Just light and silly talk and, and forget everything that's ugly and mean and everything that's nasty and wrong. Uh, uh, are you thirsty? Can, yeah. can I get you a drink? Uh, you, know, you know, this bed's too short for you. <laughs> it, it was mine as a boy. You, you remember how you used to come in at night and, uh, and sit by me and, and spread the blanket all snug over me and, and sing me ballads and, and baby songs, huh? Fetch me my Bible. I feel so restless in my mind. There. There. You remember the games we used to play? How we'd ride our fiery horse in the in the Soria Moria Castle. A feast is given by the prince and the king. <laughs> now, now you 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 rest yourself on the sleigh cushion. And I, I'll drive you there. Hey, dear. Am I invited to the oh, castle? <laughs> oh, of course you're invited. You know, you always were. Come on. Giddy up there, Blackie. Come on. Giddy up. 
I hear a sound of ringing. Oh, no, it, it, it's the shiny harness bells, Mother. Oh, how hollow it sounds. Oh, we're, we're driving over the fjord, and the ice is hollow, and it, and it rumbles. I'm scared. What is that hum so strange? Oh, oh, there, that's the pine trees singing in the wind, Mother. Now, 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 you rest quiet, huh? Something sparkles and glistens out there. Where's that light coming from? Huh? Oh, from, from, from the castle window. Oh, can you hear? Oh, lis listen to the dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. There. Look, there's St. Peter. I can see him. He, he's inviting you to, to stop and come inside. Inviting me? Aye. Well, with honor. There, yeah, darling. What fancy doings you're driving your poor old mother to? Come on, Blackie. Shake her like that, Blackie. You drive so fast. You make me weary. Oh. Oh, the lights are all shining brightly before us. Uh, our drive will soon be over. I'll lie back and close my eyes and put my faith in you, dear boy. Oh, oh, there's a big crowd in front of the castle for the people. The people are all milling about the gate. Here comes Pageant with his mother! Oh, what say you, Mr. St. Peter? Oh, can my mother come in here? Oh, you, you'd have to look a long time before you'd find a more honest soul. Oh, as for myself, well, the less said about Pag Yint, the better. But, but you must count it an honor, sir, to have my mother here. And, and, and please you, sir, make her happy. Well, you, you won't find anybody from down home better than she is. Uh-uh. Here, here comes God the Father. Now you're going to catch it, St. Peter. Stop being so proud and choosy, Peter. Mother Rosa is welcome here. Ha <laughs> ha! That's just what I knew would happen. Mother. Your eyes. Mother. Oh. Oh, why do you look like that? But don't, don't lie there and stare at me. Speak to me. It's your boy, Pat. I see. You can rest yourself now. Our drive is over. I, I thank you for all your days, for the lickings and the kisses of my childhood. Now, see, you, 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 you must thank me back. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.